How's it going everybody? So in this video we're going to be discussing dopamine precursors, how to take them, how to effectively use them, and uh, what is the potential for tolerance, withdrawal, and kind of like some of these commonly fear-mongered, horrific side effects that people constantly will kind of like uh, claim on the internet, okay? So let's start off with uh, a general discussion. So yeah, dopamine precursors. Uh, so generally speaking, people like to go towards things like tyrosine, macunapurins, um, and even things like phenylalanine, because these are the precursors for dopamine and the entire catecholamine cascade, okay? So phenylalanine converts into tyrosine and then into L-DOPA. And then obviously there's a variety of other intermediate steps and other possible pathways like thyroxin and thyroid hormone, etc. But eventually it turns into dopamine and then adrenaline and neuroadrenaline. Okay, so all of these neurotransmitters play a primary role and your motivation and your seeking of achievement, your seeking of pleasure, your seeking of happiness. These are the excitement and seeking and motivation neurotransmitters. So very often, especially in the last six months or so, I have been rather vocal about not aiming to kind of like um, consume dopamine precursors and stimulants like Yohimbi and even like these testosterone boosting type herbs and things uh, as a primary means to fix your problems. Uh, it might possibly, people might have maybe taken me the wrong way when I made those videos. Um, I never once meant to 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 sound like I was trying to say that, you know, taking tyrosine and phenylalanine and these things are bad per se. It's just that most people have kind of basic foundational life problems, mental problems, and health problems that are better served through seeking balance. And so, like, people have, like, these toxic um, habit loops, like watching pornography, binging on social media, addiction to scrolling, you know, scrolling, 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 and um, just they're hyper-simulated. And so I, 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 I very firmly and sternly cautioned against taking things like tyrosine and macuna and things like Tonkat Ali and even things like Tribulus uh, simply because none of those things are really going to help you if your underlying foundation and health is not met. And, and, and I think that these things can, can definitely still benefit you either way, but um, especially people who are scared of... Um, frying out their dopamine system, which is kind of impossible with precursors, so to speak. Uh, the number one thing that's going to fuck up your dopamine system is all of these overstimulating behaviors. <laughs> so if you don't get these overstimulating habits out of the way first, and even things like an addiction to self-help or an addiction to biohacking, an addiction to health information where you're obsessing over it and you have these feelings of disparity. Like you need to fix that first, okay? Uh, and that was my main point. It's not like, I'm not one of these fear-mongering people who thinks that if you take Makuna or Tyrosine, you're gonna fuck your shit up because that's just not how it works. So anyway, um, let's kind of get into each of these things. So uh, let's start off with Makuna Purins. So Makuna Purins, uh, contains a precursor of L-DOPA, a uh, precursor of dopamine known as L-DOPA. And L-DOPA is further along in the catecholamine cascade. 
So it is a more direct precursor to dopamine than something like tyrosine or phenylalanine, which have multiple conversion steps before achieving conversion to dopamine. Whereas L-DOPA is like like two steps away from from com- converting into dopamine, tyrosine has like four or five steps, uh, depending on what you're counting as steps and enzymatic reactions. So, um, typically, so there's a lot of different uh, Macuna extracts on the market. You have to be very careful not to be buying like whole Macuna powders because if you're buying the raw Macuna powders. Uh, First of all, it has a protease inhibitor, which inhibits the digestion and absorption of proteins, including amino acids like L-DOPA. And the amount of L-DOPA in it, first of all, can vary. It might not even be like a therapeutic dosage unless you take a large amount of it. And second of all, the amount uh, that whatever L-DOPA is in the Macuna whole raw powder uh, might not be very bioavailable, right? Are you even digesting that Makuna bean powder, right? Uh, And it's probably going to take a lot longer to absorb, okay, because it's a bean powder and it has to ferment in your intestine. So how much like dopamine conversion you're getting from a raw Makuna powder is highly questionable. Um, and judging from the reviews on a lot of Makuna, Makuna extract supplements, it seems like most people don't know the difference between a Makuna, powder, a Makuna extract and, and a Makuna bean powder. Because people, well, anyway, generally a high quality Makuna extract that's highly concentrated in L DOPA is going to have like a white, uh, a moist, it's going to be like a more moist white powder that tastes slightly sweet and chocolatey. It's, uh, but not like bitter, like more like white chocolate. It's very delicious actually, but the taste is very subtle. Most people probably, their taste buds are all hijacked from artificial sweeteners and things. So they probably can't taste it, but, but anyway, um, I find, I find Makuna extracts tasty. And so, yeah, you do want a concentrated Makuna extract. If it's not a standardized L-DOPA Makuna extract, don't waste your fucking money. Just straight up. Okay. So it's I find nowadays is extremely hard to find a really good uh, Makuna extract that is concentrated enough in L-DOPA and is legit. So previously there was Hyperion Herbs. They had a Makuna extract. But the founder, Brandon Gilbert, doesn't like to sell herbs that have this you know, uh, drug like quality to it. Um, and Makuna is one of those. So he quit selling it. And that was the best Makuna powder that I had ever found. Uh, I was using now foods for a while. Now foods, Makuna extract is actually not bad. Uh, it's just that it's not as highly concentrated in L dopa per, per serving. Uh, and we're going to get to dosing here in a bit. But Now Foods Makuna Dopa is a good supplement. Uh, Nutricost used to sell Makuna extract in bulk. And uh, they'd give you like 500 servings. And it was like uh, 500 millig- or 800 milligrams per serving standardized like 40% L-Dopa. So every little serving, you, every little scoop you'd get was like, 400 milligrams of L-DOPA or something like that or something like that. I don't remember, but it was highly concentrated. But they switched to a raw whole bean powder because people were complaining that the powder was white. So now you get a cheaper, less effective product, pretty much ineffective, useless product for the same price because people are stupid. Um, And so it doesn't work anymore, basically. It's a different product. So finding a good Makuna product now is not easy. So let me kind of talk about how to take Makuna. So um, the research on Makuna purins, okay, is pretty clear. 
uh, there have been studies. There have been studies uh, for a pretty long duration, taking the Makuna extract in very high amounts with no negative side effects whatsoever. Um, there have been uh, studies taken for weeks and months on end with no side effects, no like noticeable withdrawal symptoms or anything catastrophic. Um, and there were studies comparing Makuna extracts compared to the Parkinson's drug Levodopa and they standardized L-Dopa content between the two groups and they found, um, some of the common kind of muscular and tremor type side effects you commonly find with too much dopamine, uh, happened after a number of months in the, in the levodopa group, but did not happen in the Makuna Purins group or, or the free, the, 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 the side effects of like what parasthenia or however you pronounce it, the side effects in the, in the Makuna Purins group was like so insignificant that there was virtually, basically, it, it was pretty. It was deemed that Makuna is definitely way safer. There's hardly any side effects involved, so they they tested it head to head, basically. And so basically, there's uh, something about the Makuna extract that hasn't been proven, so to speak, but it's hypothesized that there's other kind of like regulatory compounds, probably dopamine uh, carboxylase inhibitors or whatever, that that seem to regulate uh, L-DOPA in a way that prevents these negative side effects. And so, and you don't really see true negative side effects in L-DOPA and uh, Makuna extracts, not in commercial preparations. And if it was as bad as Levodopa, it would probably be taken off the market. Now, I'll tell you what you do see. You see the same thing in Makuna you know, Makuna supplementation reviews and stuff like that. And people on anonymous people on Reddit and stuff, you'll see the same anecdotes with Makuna that you'll see with any herb that there's just a, a little, a little speck of fear mongering going on. It just starts blowing out of proportion in hypochondriac type people. And I, I have, I, I'm just going to say that, that like, I know of people closely. Okay who are hypochondriacs where if they see a little comment anywhere, like on the internet that, you know, like Rishi mushroom might inhibit DHT or something like that, they will freak out and immediately nocebo themselves into experiencing the same symptoms just because they expected it to happen. So it's very important to understand that the, so like you'll see in these Reddit discussions, right? I have gone deep down the rabbit hole. Okay, so the research does not show any like t uh, negative side effects. You see a lot of people in these Reddit communities talking about taking crazy, crazy doses of Makuna extracts, equ equating to like over two grams of L-Dopa a day. And they claim they've been taking it for months on end and have no negative side effects, which would be similar to my experiences with Makuna. Only I never really took that much, and I definitely stopped taking it after a while. But uh, you go down the rabbit hole, most of these people that are fear-mongering admit they have never taken it before. But they're ju it's just based on hypothesis and speculation and what they it would expect to happen based on basically drugs like level dopa and caffeine, which are not the same thing as macunapurins. Um, same thing with like, you know, green tea compared to isolated caffeine, you drink enough green tea, it might just put you to sleep it has a relaxing quality. We take, uh, caffeine supplements is not going to put you to sleep. So, um, so yeah, my recommendations for Makuna would be, it depends on the extract and your, it depends on your own set baseline and what you're trying to use it for. For me personally, I found success with um, around the equivalent of like, um, I don't know, maybe 
four to 500 milligrams of L-DOPA twice a day, maybe. And that's like a maximum dose, you know. But you can experiment. Like, again, there's no, I have not seen any scientific literature outlining true negative consequences of taking Makuna extracts. Um, unless you're taking a 99% L-DOPA extract. I mean, but I've seen people claim that they had no problems with that either. But yeah, so even in Parkinson's patients taking Levodopa, the conditions in which they're taking it under is pretty extreme before they actually experience negative side effects. So, um, yeah. And obviously when you take Makuna, like I've found benefits towards motivation, uh, benefits towards uh, strength and, and recovery from, from training. It seems like my muscle mass increases rather substantially whenever I take Makuna for a couple weeks on end. But that might just be that my dopamine's improved and so my perception of myself is elevated. So I just maybe, um, I maybe, maybe I blow it in my mind. I blow it up in my mind because I have more dopamine. So I'm more high on myself. That's possible. All right. So let's move on to uh, L tyrosine. And just so everyone knows, I'm not going to talk about phenylalanine in this video because I've had kind of, I haven't had enough experience with phenylalanine, even though I have taken it and I've given it to my mom and she has good experiences with it. And we know hypothetically what phenylalanine should do. Uh, I just, I haven't really had as, you know, years of experience with it. I've had years of experience with Makuna and I've had years of experience with tyrosine. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, okay. So, and Makuna is one of those things that you just really got to experiment with. And you have to understand not all extracts are equal. There is a very high variability of Makuna extracts, depending on the brand. One that I would caution against would be bulk supplements. Like they're known for just switching, switching the batches out pretty frequently where you never know what you're going to get. And what's on the label is oftentimes not what you actually get. Trust me. Uh, that is a very hit or miss and risky. Um, and the one that I got from bulk supplements made me very angry and aggressive. I don't know what was in it. Um, I've never had a Makuna supplement taste like that ever, no matter what it was, whether it was a raw herb or not. Okay, so let's get into tyrosine. And, you know, pe people who say, oh, it's a bean, it's not an herb, like they are noobs. Like they, <laughs> they don't understand uh, herbalism terminology. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, yeah, tyrosine. So L-tyrosine. So, yeah, so tyrosine is a kind of like farther precursor that has a lot more steps in the dopamine cascade compared to, to L-DOPA. And with tyrosine, um, you see a lot more positive anecdotal reports. So in the scientific literature, tyrosine has been taken, taken up to 15 grams, actually up to 20 grams a day for three months with zero negative side effects whatsoever. And this is very, very counter to what you will see in people's kind of like fear mongering. People will say, you better not take more than a thousand milligrams uh, three times a week, and then you must cycle it. <laughs> and, and it's like in the scientific literature, there's people taking 7,000 to 15,000 uh, milligrams per day uh, for three months straight with no cycling. And there's no negative side effects. There was one study that I've talked about many times before that was done on military, uh, military uh, soldiers or whatever. And uh, they were put into like uh, war simulators or they're going into boot camp or something like that. And they were basically, um, they are sleep deprived uh, and stuff like that, you know, f nutrient deprived, etc. But they, the, the researchers gave them uh, 15,000 milligrams of tyrosine a day 
uh, before going into stressful situations in their military training. And uh, they experience remarkable improvements in reaction time and their ability to, to react under stress and pressure. Um, and their cognition was uh, that of a, of a highly wakeful person. Pretty much all mental, cognitive, reflexive, and um, you know things that you would expect people with higher dopamine to be improved was drastically improved at fifteen thousand milligrams, and that benefit sustained over three month a three month period with no negative side effects. And they had tested fifteen thousand compared to twenty thousand milligrams, and they found no difference between the two, as in. 15 milligrams is just 15,000 milligrams is just effective as 20,000. So, um, so that's just one study. I've actually seen multiple studies that tested L tyrosine and its, its benefits and side effects, uh, at varying doses over a long period of time. I've seen studies, uh, uh, showing 7,000 milligrams taken over the course of several months. I think up to six months at one point at one point with no negative side effects from l tyrosine supplementation and the benefits sustained uh for the most for the most part some people might notice uh the initial benefits uh that they experience on l tyrosine is profound and extremely significant and it might kind of like uh, fade fade out just by a couple notches over over time, but the benefits that, the, that people experience from L tyrosine doesn't completely diminish. It's not like caffeine or something, and even caffeine, the benefits don't completely diminish in studies, um, or even this idea that you're only the only benefits you experience is getting yourself back to baseline. It's not even like that at all. And furthermore, um, you can see lots and lots of anecdotal reports of people taking tyrosine, like way, way more, like probably at least 10 times the anecdotal reports of people taking tyrosine with good benefits compared to Makuna Perens. You see a shit ton of fear mongering people from those who have never taken it before. And you see people that have severe mental illness who are trying to treat their mental illness with Makuna or tyrosine. And then they, lo and behold, their mental illness doesn't get better and they freak out and they post these crazy like reviews. Like I took Makuna Purins for one week in, in, in one capsule for one week, half the, the recommended amount. And my life has never been the same. I, I'm in a mental ward and all this stuff. It's like, I'm sure Makuna didn't do that. Uh, and we're talking things like depression, by the way, just to put it out there. Not schizophrenia. So, yeah. I, I think it's very easy for people with pre-existing conditions to nocebo themselves. And so it's very common for people who already have severe mental issues to try to self-medicate with these supplements. And then they their mental illness kind of takes over and causes them to overreact and create symptoms that don't actually exist being created from those supplements. Um Coming from someone, well, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, uh, someone who was diagnosed with severe mental illness as a kid that you wouldn't believe <laughs> looking at me now. So I have experience being on that other side. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I mean, so tyrosine... Um, there's N-acetyl tyrosine and then there's regular tyrosine. Uh, and so you're going to have to experiment with both of them. Uh, I have used tyrosine for pretty long stretches of time, taking anywhere from 5,000 to about 1,500 milligrams in one session. And I found a benefit taking 1,500 milligrams uh, once a day as well as twice a day. But I think it's important to start with the lowest effective dose. And then over time, if you start to notice your uh, benefits fade away, you can increase 
uh, the dough slightly, right? So that's why I like taking powders because you can measure it out. So one fourth of a teaspoon of tyrosine powder is like 450 milligrams. Try that at first, and, and then if you experience good benefits and then they fade, um, increase it by an eighth of a teaspoon. So that's probably 7,500 milligrams or something. I don't know. That's probably like 650 or something. I don't know. And just keep doing that. But most people find that they don't experience a tolerance, and whatever tolerance they do experience is not that significant. So... Uh, Tyrosine is heavily rate limited by several enzymatic processes, okay? Uh, and so you don't really need to worry too much about taking too much tyrosine. Tyrosine is readily found in multiple foods, uh, even though there is a huge difference between taking it by itself compared to taking it uh, with other amino acids in the form of whole proteins, um, I don't think it's rational to be severely kind of scared of taking precursors, especially things like tyrosine and phenylalanine, because of the rate limiting processes. It's highly unlikely your body is going to, you know, compensate with upregulation of dopamine receptors. Okay. Now, if you're taking, you know, level dopa or possibly maybe macuna, but the, and there's literally no signs of withdrawal tolerance or or negative side effects that are extremely significant outside of just missing the elevated kind of dopamine state for like a week or so you're not going to find that in the scientific literature you don't even find that in the scientific literature you're just going to find fear-mongering people so uh i i would say most people take too little tyrosine or macuna rather than take too much and if you see people that only took a thousand milligrams of tyrosine a day or they only took like, you know, 250 milligrams of Makuna, right, a day. And then they're like, man, I almost died or whatever, fucked up my dopamine. Or I started seeing spirits. Like, chances are very high that those people are experiencing a severe nocebo. Uh, there are literally, like, the people that take this and experience the best benefits with no side effects are the ones who are taking higher doses uh, all right so experiment with low doses of tyrosine and then experiment with higher doses and remember up to 15,000 milligrams a day for three months have been taken in studies and uh, with no side effects and only significant benefits so take these things fasted on an empty stomach um, and remember lots of great benefits. I found it seems to keep me lean. It seems to promote uh, lean muscle mass, it seems. Because uh, every time I take it, I just look, I become in phenomenal shape. It definitely improves my ability to push through harder training sessions. It improves my motivation, my desire to be productive. Uh, and I think it regulates sleep over time. I've noticed my sleep dramatically improves. Uh, so I think it plays a vital role in regulating your your circadian and wake, probably your wake your waking rhythms. I think taking a dopamine precursor first thing in the morning kind of primes your brain to wake up at that time every single morning and get you get you going. So, uh, and there's a lot of things you can stack it with to make it more effective. Uh, things like rhodiola, rosea. Um, uh, maca root, uh, green tea, ax green tea extract, or matcha green tea brewed together. Also, goyusa and yerba mate, I find, seem to be extremely beneficial um, as a synergistic type effect. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. If you all have any questions or, or comments, uh, post them down below. Let me know what you think. Um, and I will talk to y'all next time.